Free. Happy 2015, my gaggle of gamers. With such an epic and packed year ahead of us across all platforms, this could be the best year yet, no matter your persuasion of gaming tastes or format. A game due to be a big hitter in the next Christmas release window is Microsoft's very own King of the Kitchen, an all-round Greek Spartan. Yep, Halo 5 Guardians is one of an expansive selection of games this year, and we have been given a very early sip of it alongside the Master Chief Collection that was in many ways a beta all of its own, but my upcoming review will cover more on that. The beta started on December 29th and runs until the 18th of this month. It allows you to play one game type, Slayer, across two maps that are both small and vertical in design with Truth being a remake from a Halo 2 map and being simple symmetrical design with pockets of upper and lower floors. Each week the community can feedback on what is good and bad and also vote for new weapons to be deployed across the beta. Along with this, new maps and new game types will be added to the playlist each week, allowing a total of around 8 maps with which to do battle on. So far we have seen Slayer from the first week and the second week a new game type called Breakout, which runs across its own map called Crossfire. And then on top of this you have Eden, Truth, Empire, and finally my favourite, Regret, or at least my favourite so far. As this is a beta, going into bugs and glitches needs to be kept to irrelevant only, but overall it is a solid performer for a game due in around 12 months time. Aside from obvious corner cuts to the tune of the 720p resolution and the use of some low quality textures across parts of the map, but all safe and no concern at this point and very normal for a beta, more so one trying to stress test infrastructure and remove obvious bottlenecks from a work in progress. What it does achieve is a smooth and responsive 60fps update that fits well and is welcome for a fast twitch shooter such as this. From my frame rate analysis we can see the FPS is pretty solid and consistent with no real issues at all in play. The presentation is pretty solid and constant but it does not run a lock 60 and does suffer some small judder and dips but this is of no great concern and certainly not out of the ballpark for a game that's pretty solid 60. The issues don't seem to be GPU related, more to do with animation, stutters and maybe some even netcode related issues. Certainly nothing is taxing the effect on the GPU or the CPU which seems to be delivering the visual solidly at the current resolution and smooth frame rate at which both will only improve towards launch and for a year out it performs very well indeed. In fact the lowest dip I get is on the regret level which is the most strenuous of them all down to 48 and those are for fleeting moments. Across multiple tests I can't really see anything running around 50 to 60 frames pretty much consistently and it spends a good portion of that time in the upper echelons of 60. So this is pretty much what you would call a 60 FPS game and within the next 12 months they'll probably raise the resolution to the 1080 by 1360 resolution that Advanced Warfare ran and get it to a lot 60 just like that game is in multiplayer and considering this is using a hell of a lot more effects on post processing and lighting that's pretty impressive indeed. Once you've picked up your chosen selection of controller settings and speed, you can also customise your Spartan, as before with a dual colour scheme to keep your guy in fashion, even if you are only blue and red during the game. Once a game is found, the 4v4 action gets underway and we are treated to a Destiny style intro cinematic, with your Spartan team all looking sufficiently buff and hyped in cool fashion as they stare at the camera. This bad boy bro moment continues at the end of each round with a cringe worthy high five and celebratory group huddle that should be dropped, in my opinion, faster than a burning firework, as it just feels awkward and out of place here. As do the kill cams in the game, which at this point are delayed and laggy, but also just add frustration to the moment. Leaving the death cam allows you to see the teabag action be witnessed and motivate your next move and return the favour. Outside of these small gripes, the loading and setup of games is reasonably fast and other than sometimes being stuck in a never ending search lobby, it performs better than the final Halo Master Chief for matchmaking, with a much smaller selection of maps and game types. Some of the engine issues can be seen here as the animation and alpha effects all seem unsynced from the game as they run at an uneven pace, sometimes between 30 and 60 and variable, but again it's early days, no cause for concern. Standard Halo issue is assault rifle and handgun that all start with and then the power weapons are deployed at set times across the map to promote conflict and allow the team to dominate the area. We grab the sniper rifle. These are currently sniper rifles and bull swords and can become a mad dash at the start of the game as both teams rush for the early advantage. The sniper rifle feels and looks the same from weapon from Halo 2, 3, as does the sword, battle rifle, MNP machine gun and magnum. 
And this is a feeling that extends across the entire beta. Controls, character design, weapons and sounds along with colours, animations and even maps all have an overtly familiar feel to them. Anyone who has played any Halo game. And this is a good and a bad thing. There have been some improvements though. Now your heavy Spartan warrior brought his or her running shoes which allows you to cover vast areas of the map double time complete with speed lines as you run. Adding to the speed is a jet dash allowing you to slide, strafe or burst a little faster but use it wisely as it has a short distance and it needs time to recharge. A power slam also returns from reach giving you the chance to lay the smack down from above with a well timed and this is key click and target mid air to pummel your opponent. Climbing on ledges is done through a scramble and another press of the jump button to shake things up. Add in mid-air hang time that Michael Jordan would be envious of, enabling you to hover as you aim down the sights of your weapon and line up your shots. Yes, here is another change, with all weapons from the handgun to the rifle having a hood scope, which on the assault rifle adds a subtle doff effect and range scope, and the magnum uses a circle dot, which allows each gun to have a different feel. But this is something I am again not convinced works on all weapons, and makes the whole game lean even more towards the COD and Titanfall game style it so clearly has aspirations of. And this identity crisis the game seems to be in has an effect across the entire playstyle and feel. But even though that all sounds like I am being negative, I'm not as I think it works incredibly well. By improving the speed of the game and pace, along with the fast reactions of your soldier feels just right. Just small things conflict with this, such as when shot, the amount of flinch from being hit for such a heavy armoured mega soldier can make gun battles a case of who sees who first. Also the shield recharge is very slow, and this is exasperated more by the need to stand still or near as damn it for the boost to drop and allow it to recharge. I like and see the tactical side of this, and added with the jet boost could make for a run or gun choice in battles, if it were not that the boost feels so neutered and near redundant. Not only that, but it does have one use before recharge is needed, but it only takes you a few feet, meaning that any chance of escape or dodge is reduced simply to the strafe evasion and continue attack or cool slide and kill. I would like to see this improved and maybe even add it as a kind of perk so that you could jump and then dash away at a much faster and farther range, giving you a tactical retreat option when you end up face on with the entire opposing team. Spartan or not, it'll only end bad for you in a 4v1 scenario. But this is the kind of feedback 343 will want and I hope that the things like this will improve and be added and removed like the hood on the weapons. The ADS stuff is just not needed in my opinion. Another area ripe for work is the time to death is too fast and this is made worse by the netcode hiding lag, where in Master Chief Collection you can see the old fashioned code and lag evident in games as here. In Halo 5 the lag is hidden but still felt. You can die from what is from your side a 2 or 3 shot hit and less than a second you are dead but on the kill cam you can see clear misses and longer time of shots and they are not picked up on your side if it's a bad or a poor connection. For example here you can see where I don't even see this guy he's nowhere around me and I turn to shoot and yet on his view he comes up and beats me down without me even looking at him. You can see this more on grenade throws and them being delayed from your hand. Even being out of range from your view and then still dying through a wall when the character can still see you. It all feels very similar to the issues that played Battlefield 4 for the best part of last year and hopefully this beta will again allow this to be tweaked, improved and ultimately fixed. It's by no means affects every match, but having no gauge of ping rates or server locale, it can be a hit and miss affair, and with servers being US based, this can make us Europeans have a slightly lesser chance of a decent connection rate. But for a beta, the server and the game is pretty stable and solid, and they are working on the multiplayer side as hard as the single player, I'm sure. With this being a huge esports game and now ramped up to a far more frenzied paced game, will now be far more enjoyable view as a spectacle than previous iterations of Halo. At first this speed boost does not feel that large, but go back and play older Halos and they instantly feel much slower and almost subdued now in comparison. Anyone into COD or Titanfall will feel right at home here, as will Halo long termers that just need that little bit more to adjust to the notch up or two in speed. The gun balance still feels it needs a little work, with a battle rifle as deadly as ever but the Magnum nearly being as effective as the assault rifle. The MNP is a killer at close range but far and away the biggest area for work is grenades. Many games and battles have a start, middle and end that involves spamming grenades and this is even more of an issue when you are regularly killed by your own team spam. It's not only the sheer amount on offer and dotted around the map but also the huge range they have and in some of the smaller rooms you can literally be left with nowhere to go but down. With the smaller maps this is where it is felt the most but maybe the prevalence of grenades and the damage range should be altered and maybe reduced more from team kills as in some teams they could be more dangerous than enemy than the foe. 
What is a clear improvement, even in this early multiplayer-only beta, are the visuals, resolution aside. Looking like it has adopted the de rigueur of physically based shading, or at least elements thereof, the gloves, guns, scenery all look to reflect, diffuse, and ultimately react to the light accurately. And light is a big part of this game. Sporting a great many dynamic lights that affect the areas and characters along with real-time shadows that can come from multiple sources. Strobe lights illuminate the walls and ceiling along with your hands, guns and models. Self shadows work from each light source with your own body casting light over your hands and rifle. The PVC effect on your armour catches the glancing light and looks great. The decent ambient occlusion method is also in use, showing off your hands or gun as you near walls with a soft contact shadow around the edge. Along with great lighting you get high dynamic range light sources seen from the sun or other lights with a great bloom that can cover the edge of screens boosted by lens flare and also a blurred doff effect with dust on the lens added to with a chromatic aberration touch. The shader work continues on as it falls onto the scenery, bathing it all in a soft sunset glow. Blue electric lights cast long shadows as you run past with a particle shower for more visual flare. Motion blur is employed as you dart and run across, with camera and radial blur enhancing the speed, showing that even at 60 FPS motion blur is still needed and appreciated. Doff is used sparingly in the game and works mostly as you aim down your sights with your weapon or when you are near scenery. All this adds to a very nice visual suite of effects which also cover the map. Teammates or enemies occlude specular reflections from dynamic sources as they run, dash and dart about, each casting their own shadows across the map as yourself when in the light projection. Specular reflections on walls and objects are all in place but look a little more early in implementation. Grenade and your own shield flash affect them accordingly. Even the grenade particle explosions collides with ceilings, walls and bounces on the floor. The resolution of the specular maps looks low at this point and the coverage and luminance range are not as great as we will probably end up seeing as the textures in place are low as is the filtering on them. It's most certainly a work in progress with the reflections using on the specular light using screen space and this is extended with the new map for breakout mode using complete screen space reflection for everything in the map. I'm certainly sure that this will be something they implement later on in the game and with them currently using it for all the light source reflections including grenades and characters dynamically there will certainly be areas of the game that will use screen space reflection as well I'm sure. But I must stress this is a beta and as an internal build for stress and bug testing this is a very good base for sure. Sound is another area that greatly impresses, metallic footsteps, the return spring from a reload, the whoosh of wind as you run or turn, better shown when stopping from a dash. Fellow Spartans yell out team talk as you play, all adding to the feel of a tight squad in battle, even if your human team is less vocal than the AI ones. Each gun sounds heavy and impactful, grenades can be heard bouncing, something they do far too much. Gunshots and voices echo and reverb realistically and with a good sound system or headphones, you can directionally locate teammates and enemies from sound alone. Picked up a DMR! It's an audible treat. Overall, the game is a very nice visual treat, which only adds to the immersion in the gameplay and the feel, and with all these strong effects, sound design, and frame rate being seen already in such an early beta, never mind this being multiplayer only, then the treats that await the single player when they can go mad on these and turn them up will be a sight to behold, I am sure. The engine is a clear evolution from the Halo 4 one, used to great effect on the 360 and again on the Master Chief Collection. You can see here the light bleed effect of a bloom coming from the light source as it casts over the objects in this foreground. This is exactly the same as it is in the Halo Master Chief Collection of Halo 4 and Halo 4 on the 360 as it is here in Halo 5 Beta. Again, the same engine traits, certainly an evolution of that great engine which was aided by the works of Corrine Yu, who used to work for Microsoft and 343 before she jetted off to Naughty Dog. So expect the same superb AA solution improved even more with these great effects and more to come. I think that this beta has shown that Microsoft and 343 working hard to give the core gamers what we want and the masses without sacrificing the visual flair and wow we expect and not destroying a pillar of a franchise like Halo. In fact, Microsoft seems to be pushing hard behind the scenes to give as much hardware back to devs as fast as possible, and certainly seem to have caught up from the clear unfinished launch developer software they shipped with, and are now probably ahead of Sony on this front. 
but this came from a much, much greater need to do so, and is much needed and I'm very sure welcome for devs and owners alike. This is a video I will put up soon that explains some of the reasons, process and technology that makes up these consoles from both a hardware and always even more important software side. Please look out for that soon and hopefully it will clarify, educate and ease many minds alike. Overall, I am very impressed with the Halo 5 Beta. 343 have added and changed the structure and base of Halo to make it feel fresher, more modern, but not enough to make anyone feel like this is not their Halo game and become detached and resentful for it. With another 12-ish months left to go and changes to be made, along with much more to be shown, I think that this cements any of the doubters that the Xbox One is more than up for delivering great, stunning and compelling games that can cater for all tastes, styles and deliver on the visuals that really will hold their own and stand proud against all other rivals. This game is more than a 2015 buy list for me and will be a surefire system seller come launch and it could deliver a knockout blow for Microsoft. I hope you enjoyed this or any of my other content and if so please subscribe for more informative and entertaining content and click the thumb if you did. Also, longer viewers of my channel may have noticed a change to intro and presentation that I'm working through at present. Please feedback if you prefer this, or if not, what you don't like. I really appreciate your feedback and input, and again, and thanks to you all for watching me, sticking around, and helping me grow this channel now to over 3,000 subscribers, and hopefully continuing to expand. I have great expectations for 2015 and beyond, and I hope you and more will stay with me on this journey. You guys and girls take care, and I will see you soon on the next one. Taking fire! Keep fire! Gain the lead! Double kill! Gain the lead! Weapon pad in 10. 